I know, my friends, that you're probably fed up with my riffs on cosmic consciousness. But uh, I thought maybe I have a new perspective today. So I'm going to continue my obsession with the nature of reality and cosmic creation. So today I went on Gemini, and um, this is just a prelude to what I'm going to really talk about. And I went to Gemini, you know, the AI, and I asked it, uh, can you summarize Deepak Chopra's perspectives on consciousness as fundamental reality? And please feel free to draw from his writings and videos. So here's what I got. It said, uh, absolutely, here's a summary of Deepak Chopra's perspectives on consciousness as the fundamental reality, drawing from his writings and videos. Key ideas. Consciousness is primary. Chopra argues that consciousness is not created by the brain or any physical process, but rather it is the fundamental ground of all existence. The material world, including our brains, emerges from this underlying field of consciousness. What it fails to say is that the material world is an interpretation of uh, species-specific perceptual activity, nevertheless. Then the next point it makes, uh, this is all from, uh, from uh, what do you call it, Gemini, it says the illusion of duality, the subject-object split, where we perceive a separation between ourselves as observers and the world we observe is an illusion within consciousness. I like that. Consciousness encompasses both the observer and the observed. Good job. Then it goes on to say, Consciousness is not bound by space or time. It exists as a boundless field of potential from which experiences arise. The quantum connection. Chopra suggests connections between the principles of consciousness and those of quantum mechanics. Both point to a reality where underlying unity and interconnectedness give rise to these seemingly separate objects and experiences of our world. Not bad. Self-awareness. The essence of consciousness is self-awareness. The ability of consciousness to know itself. Our personal experiences emerge from the self-referential quality. Pretty good. Experiential nature. We cannot directly study consciousness with the same objective methods we use to examine physical phenomena. Obviously, because consciousness uh, is not physical. How can you uh, study uh, something that has no form and no borders and is infinite? Okay, but to go on from what uh, Gemini said, we understand consciousness uh, primarily through personal subjective awareness, uh, subjective experiences of awareness. Implications. Chopra wa wants to <laughs> redefine reality. If consciousness is the source of ma the material universe, then our common understanding of reality is incomplete. The physical world arises from this deeper non-physical foundation. Mind-body connection. The traditional understanding of the mind as a product of, of the brain is inverted. I like that. The body itself is an expression within the greater field of consciousness. This shifts focus to include consciousness in healing and well-being. I love that. Unlimited potential. Within the field of consciousness lies infinite possibilities. By tapping into the field through meditation and other practices, we can expand our awareness and unlock transformative potential. Then it goes on to say, points to consider. While Deepak Chopra's ideas are intriguing, here are some things to keep in mind. Scientific debate. debate. His views challenge mainstream scientific understanding, which often places the brain as the seat of consciousness. There is ongoing debate and research around the true nature of consciousness. Metaphysical foundations. Chopra's perspective often draws heavily from Eastern traditions like Vedanta, emphasizing the non-material aspects of reality. Subjective experience. While many find his ideas resonate, they are rooted they are rooted in subjective internal experience. This makes it more challenging to examine them within the traditional scientific tools focused on an objective 
observation. Okay, so that's what I got from um, Gemini. But now it, let's explore this a little bit more. So think of consciousness as infinite. And even though I say infinite, you know, expanding my hands, infinite actually is totally dimensionless in this case, totally formless. So you cannot visualize it, okay? But infinite means infinite possibilities for experience. Now, if fundamental reality is of the nature of consciousness, then in order to for it to have conscious experience, it has to modify itself. And the way it modifies itself is through what I've previously called sensations, sense perceptions, images, feelings, thoughts. Let's use one word for all of that. It senses itself. It knows itself. So SIFT, S-I-F-T, sensations, images, feelings, and thoughts. Let's use one word, sensing. Okay, so it senses itself by modifying itself into sensations of all kinds, perceptual sensations, thought sensations, feeling sensations, image sensations, what we call images, etc. So once again, infinite being or infinite consciousness senses itself by modifying itself into infinite varieties of combinations of sensations, okay? or sense perceptions, or sensing, or feeling, okay? So infinite varieties, infinite combinations of sensations, which are perceived by us as biological organism or instruments of observation, including our own self, but including peacocks and alligators and dolphins and whales and mosquitoes and all of that, they're all modes of sensing. They are combinations of sensations. And as that instrument of sensation, they perceive varieties of universes, <laughs> varieties of ecosystems. Okay, and they uh, then gravitate to the ecosystems of which they are um, a part. Okay, the ecosystem or habitat of a lion, tiger is different than the ecosystem of Deepak, which is now New York City, etc. So what these instruments of observation, which are biological organisms, project as a result of their own sensory apparatus is their own perceptual reality. But all this is happening in the non-local awareness. Nothing is happening locally at all, okay? Nothing is happening locally at all. All this is happening. So what makes you and me as human biological organisms different amongst all these species that are part of the food chain, you know, in the ecosystem, we are also part of the food chain. But what makes us different is that we have the ability to language to go near this um, fundamental reality and to try to explain it through language. Uh, not that other species don't have languages, but they do only for, you know, mating and food and danger. We have a language for creating stories and therefore out of the stories we create models. And one of those models is science and another model is philosophy. Those are language models that can take us close to the truth, but they cannot give us an experience of the truth because no model actually is the truth, just as no map is the territory and no menu is the meal. So ultimately, if you want to experience fundamental reality, divine, infinite reality, beyond every species and its perception, then we have to transcend the senses. And that's what we've done as a human species. We've done that through yoga, through meditation, through mindfulness practices, which form the basis of the philosophies of Vedanta and Kashmir Shaivism and all that, and the non-dual traditions. So in that sense, we are divine, but also everything is divine. Everything is divine, but we have the awareness 
to actually experience through transcendence of fundamental reality as divine beings, as God. Now, if you want to create another model, you can say infinite space, or let's say infinite consciousness is expanding as infinite space. And infinite space contains infinite time. And the space-time continuum curves upon itself to create the experience we call gravity. And the experience we call gravity creates the concept we call mass. And mass is related to matter, which is also uh, connected to gravity. And all this combination is actually um, contained in a singularity, whatever we call that, you know, singularity is the potential for experience, that's it, all experience. And so, whatever model we use, scientific model, philosophical model, etc., we end up with a one being, being means one existence, that is curving back within itself to create again and again infinite experiences of the universe through infinite combinations of sensations and sense perceptions. And as humans, we are closest to that. But if you want to understand this truly, then we have to give up the idea of this uh, transient personal identity, which takes many forms. Every identity you assume takes infinite forms through cosmic time. There's only one absolute identity, and that is the divine being. And at the heart of it, we are that. Atman is Brahman. So I feel that uh, we've expanded on what uh, uh, the large language system, AI, uh, talks about my uh, views on reality, but now hopefully it will expand what I've said on my views on reality. I'm only building up on what great luminaries have said in the past, but like everything else, we need to not only recycle, but actually take it one step further. So what was I going to add? Yes, large language models like Gemini or uh, or uh, chat gpt all of that will help us explore this even further because who created these large language models we did so this is going to be the next book digital dharma and uh, and if you look uh, we have a nice endorsement from sam altman who says uh, AI has the potential to help us create a more peaceful, just, sustainable, healthier, and joyful world. Digital Dharma shows your path. Sam Altman, CEO of OpenAI. So, uh, because we have language models already, and we can actually combine them all, we can explore reality even further, or should I say, we can explore new models of reality even further, but ultimately, if you want to know reality, we have to know ourself. Knowing ourself, we know our reality, but all reality. Atman is Brahman. So let me know if you disagree, agree, what your comments are. Um, I enjoy these conversations anyway, even though they seem one way. I read your comments and I'm inspired to then add more. Take care.